Hey guys, welcome back to Prognition, and in this video, we're taking a look at two of the most popular monitors by BenQ. One's a 32 inch and one is a 27 inch. Now these are both dedicated to gaming and content creation. The first one is the 32 inch, which is a 3280U monitor. It's a 4K 60 Hertz refresh rate, while this one is a 27 inch 2780Q, which is a 144 Hertz refresh rate with 2K resolution. This one's great for console gaming and content creation and photo editing because the color accuracy is very good. Same as this one is great for FPS and FPS shooter games because of that faster refresh rate. One thing very unique about both of these monitors is that they have their own superior sound system tuned by Trevolo that gives them a subwoofer at the back of the monitor. You've got two front facing speakers and a subwoofer at the back. I really haven't seen any monitor do this before. So we're really excited to try out the sound on that as well. Let's begin with some good old unboxing. Both the boxes are almost identical, so we're just gonna be taking a look at one of the boxes, which is the 27 inch, and pretty much everything is exactly the same with a 32 inch apart from that size difference. So getting into the box, you obviously will have the two cables, the power cable, HDMI, and a type C cable. You also get the stand holder, and you get the remote control holder and the remote control. You also get the instruction manual and obviously the monitor itself. Now the monitor looks pretty good and the back of that has that subwoofer. We're gonna talk about that as well. Putting this stand on is very simple, just two screws and you're pretty much done. Let's talk about the design. Now looking at the design itself, both monitors are identical to one another apart from the size difference. It has a nice little slot for you to be able to put your remote control in that little place right there on the stand. Very nice minimalistic looking. I really like how it looks. It's very clean looking. The bezels aren't too thick. And you've got the HDRI logo on the right, the BenQ logo on the left of the monitor, two speakers in the front, volume control right there at the bottom. And at the back of the monitor, you have that subwoofer which says it has Superior sound by Trevolo. Now you also have those little knobs at the back of the monitor in case you want to use them if your remote dies out, but for the most part, you're going to be using the remote control. For the connectivity, you have 3.5 mm jack, two HDMI 2.0 inputs, one TP and a type C input, and of course the power input. The back of the stand also doubles as a cable organizer for you to be able to have that nice little minimalistic look, which stays clean and organized. You can feed the cable straight through those grooves and it looks very nice and you can hide these cables without any distractions and keep your table clean all the time. So in terms of tilt, all it can do is tilt up and down, which is a little bit of a bummer for a lot of people because you want to be able to adjust the height and all that stuff. You really can't do that. You can just tilt up and down. That's a little bit annoying. But if you want to angle the monitor whichever way you wish, you can put it up on a west amount. It's got the attachments at the back and it makes it a lot more convenient to rotate it, height adjustment and all of that good stuff. So if you're very serious about that, you would definitely be using that rather than the stand itself. Now, what's really different about both of them apart from the size, obviously, is the fact that this one is only going up to 60 hertz and this one goes up to 144 hertz. Apart from that, design-wise and the way they look and feel is identical to one another. What's really great is that this is a 32 inch and you can pretty much use it like a TV at this point if you're playing console games. There's a huge difference between using a television and a monitor because of things like input lag and having this act as your TV would be a lot better if you're playing games where you actually care about your input and your FPS delay. TVs generally have a much higher input lag and input delay. So what that means is every time I press a button on this controller, for example, for the action to play out on screen, there is a little bit of a delay. So depending on what you're playing on, what your output device is, that delay can vary. So TVs generally have a higher input delay, like 30 to 40 milliseconds from when I press the button, but a monitor will have a much, much lower input delay, like four milliseconds or even one millisecond. The HDR on both of these monitors isn't HDR10, rather it's BenQ's very own HDR. HDRI. It's broken down into three basic segments. So it's not HDR10 with a thousand nit brightness, rather HDR400, but it's broken down into cinema HDR, standard HDR, and game HDR. So standard HDR is pretty much your regular HDR where it boosts up the shadows and boosts down the highlights to get a well-balanced image. The game HDR, on the other hand, is meant to add in details to the darker areas in the gameplay. It'll brighten up the darker areas within the game itself if you switch it to game HDR, while cinema HDR adds refined colors to the saturation to give you more of that cinematic look as well. So all of these HDRs can be used in different circumstances and situations to get the perfect image out of the monitor. One thing that's also very new with both these monitors is their Brightness Intelligence Plus. Now this is something BenQ has come up with for the perfect balance of the brightness levels based on your circumstance and situation of the ambient light around you. There's sensors located at the bottom of both monitors which pretty much tell them 
how bright or dark the environment is to move up and down the exposure and how much brightness the monitors are pushing out towards you. So if you're in a darker situation, it's gonna dim the lights a little bit so you don't harm your eyes. Same as if you're in a brighter situation. They're done by these sensors, as I mentioned, and you can control the sensitivity of the sensors as well, how quick and how fast they readjust and you can just change all these different settings within the menu itself. So one thing I really appreciated about both these monitors is the fact that they come with this little guy right here. That's the remote. Everything on this can be controlled using the remote so you don't really even have to touch the monitor once it's set up. Especially for things like controlling the volume and stuff, it's really perfect when you're doing content creation or listening to music and you don't really wanna keep bending over to touch and interact with both monitors. HDRI controls right here. You've got the brightness Intelligence Plus right here. All right, so we've just hooked up the PS4 Pro to the BenQ monitor. We're still on a 32 inch and we wanna test out the 4K performance along with the 60 FPS and the input lag. So for the input lag part of things, we're gonna be trying out Call of Duty. You guys can clearly see it's doing it at 4K with 60 Hertz, which is basically 60 FPS performance as well so HDR is supported which is great just look at this look at this look how good that looks like look at the details this is all the way zoomed in and you maintain so much detail now gaming with the PS4 on this in 4K was an absolute treat. Five milliseconds of delay, I didn't feel anything at all. It was very instantaneous. The 4K resolution made me really see my targets very easily. HDR performance was great. And also with the AAA titles, it was a great experience overall. But let's move on to the 27 inch. 144 Hertz was an absolute treat. We hooked it up to the most powerful PC we could find, which was my colleague's. He built this for like a billion. So it's actually really, really good. All top of the line specs. So we want to get the maximum FPS and resolution out of this that we could. All graphics set to high and the performance was absolutely mind-blowing. I've never played at such a high frame rate with such a high intensive requirement from a game like Call of Duty Warzone, but it was such a treat to play around with. The smoothness was absolutely brilliant. This was my first time playing on keyboard and mouse and I could still just get used to it very quickly, especially comparing it to playing on my PS4 with a lower refresh rate. This monitor absolutely blows my mind when it came to the refresh rate and how you can interact with it and how smooth it feels the colors were great, HDR was pretty, pretty awesome, and also playing games like CSGO, there was no screen tearing, no ghosting whatsoever. It was just absolutely brilliant to play around with. We even pushed it up to 240 FPS, and it was an absolute treat to play on. The smoothness is mind-blowing. Now, both these monitors are DCI-P3 and 10-bit FRC, which is basically 8-bit plus FRC and not native 10-bit color. Also, the DCI-P3 is about halfway through what the human eye can see, while sRGB is only a third of what we can see. So in terms of colors, the amount of colors, DCI-P3 is pretty darn close to what we actually see, which is really great. In short, to make it simple, DCI-P3 better than sRGB. Now these are both IPS panels, which is really great in terms of the viewing angle. So whatever angle you view it from, you're gonna get the same image without any loss of color, any glare. So that's very nice. Colors are the same. You don't get any washed out image, which is very nice. Now when it comes to the sound, which is something which was very interesting on both these monitors, one of the main selling points is the fact that they have their built-in subwoofer and speaker. The performance wasn't the greatest, unfortunately. Moving on from the 45%, it goes all the way up to 50. If anything between 45 to 50, to me at least, and whoever tried it out felt it was a bit unusable. I'm gonna put up a test here right now for you guys to see, and you let me know by yourself. When it goes up to 50, what you feel about it. Blunder, the mission is simple. Secure more cash than the enemy. Is all right, soldier. Mark a drop point for your team. Extraction is standing by. Mark an LZ for pickup. I felt that when you went up to 50 and there was a lot of sounds and different levels and frequencies in the game or whatever you're watching or listening to, there's a little bit of crackling that happens. I felt a lot of crackling in the high tones as well. So that was a little bit disappointing. However, I don't feel like you should be playing it at 50% anyway. Up to 40%, you get a pretty loud and decent sound out of this. So go up to 40, 35 to 40, you get great sound out of this. Really nice, really bassy sounding. Anything above that, you're gonna get that crackling, which isn't the best. And that's about it guys, that is our review of both of these monitors, the 32 inch and the 27 inch. Both of them have their own uses and are used for different situations. Console gaming, if you want really good 4K experience with console gaming and pretty decent HDR, then the 32 inch is the way to go. But if you're looking for a smaller size for more intensive gaming with higher refresh rates, then definitely the 27 inch is the way to go. There was design and everything else, they're exactly the same. You're not gonna lose out on anything. And that's about it. We really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and do consider subscribing for more content just like this. And we'll see you again in the next video.